Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Ratiullahi Rasulu ulul amri minkum. And a reminder always for myself on Abdul Ajisu, Da'ifu, Miskeenu, Zalim, a jahat. And we know nothing but what Allah wants us to know. And that by the grace of Allah that we are still in existence, we took a path in which to be nothing. Always a reminder for myself, in last days our duty is to continuously remind, remind, remind and whatever is being put together <coughs> is a ni'mat and a safety for us. And this ni'mat and safety to reach as many people as Allah wants it to reach. Not like times of old where you dealt just with your village and that was it. Whatever is coming is upon, coming upon the whole of this earth and whatever relief has to go, goes to the whole of this earth. Mm -hmm. So then the da'wah that is being instructed is trying to reach as many people possible and as many of Allah's servants doing what Allah wants them to do. A reminder for myself is the immense blessings of its reality that we forget. In this holy month of Surat Al-Kaf before we enter into the immensely blessed month of Rabbil Awal, the month of the birth of Sayyidina Muhammad the birth of Islam, the birth of Qur'an, the birth of everything that Allah wanted to manifest with the arrival of Sayyidina Muhammad that these taweezes and these items that are inspired from the heavens for us is not from the physical world. That in dealing with someone just and that came back as a reminder for myself, they asked for taweez. I'm getting it echo now. And the placement of that taweez, when they got the taweez they were placing it. And they were trying to reach me as far as where to place it, they couldn't reach me and they put it somewhere. But then inspiration came in the dream with the shaykhs and inspired that person that the location is not important for you to see it because it's not from your world. It's not that you have to see the taweez and its effect will then have an effect on bad and negative energies. They were confirming to that person, this is from Malakut. These realities are being given by permission of Allah through the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad to awliyaullah that these are the qudras and the powers of the heavenly realm. And that's a world of light to deal with these forces that are not human, not meant for you and human beings. But humans that are under the influence of extremely negative creations. And they instructed this person, just put it in the house, don't worry about. It has to be visible, does it have to be in front of something, behind of something. And that was a reminder for myself that maybe we're not talking about it enough and people have really no idea what, what's happening. That how these words have a benefit for you. Means what was given to Sultanul Awliya Ma'a Shaykh Abdul Faizi Daghestani Qaddus Salaahu Siru is the Naqshbandi taweez that says, Allahu Haq Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and then the shajara of the tariqah. And the hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi aliyul adheem and then some other words and, and names. But this is a, a flag. A reality given from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad that signifies a reality from the heavenly kingdom. And those from the heavenly kingdom know its reality and they proudly display themselves with it. And each of the tariqahs and the shaykhs they have flags 
as they align into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad We asked before they call it shajar, no, no shajar, the sinjil, sinjil, like a banner, like armies, right? When they're in the presence of Prophet they are in battalions and armies under banners. And the banner that given to them by Sayyidina Muhammad it's of the heavenly realm. So it's not something from the physical world that you show somebody or somebody in the physical realm has to see it to understand it or be scared of it. These are lights because the heavenly realm kulli shay. The malakut in the world of light is the power and authority for the physical realm. If they don't know that's something different. 99.9% .9 of people don't know. So they say, what is this, this is shirk, what does it have to do with worshipness? But even that, that word how does it even come into existence? Even when you put Ayatul Kareem they say, this is shirk. You put salawats in a calligraphy, this is shirk. So what are you talking about shirk? There's the insane madhab from insane asylum people. The Kaaba is written everything on it. The only part of shirk on that Kaaba is that he put his name on it. The king of that kingdom, he put his name on the khiswa of the holy Kaaba which he had no right to do and Allah would punish him for that. Other than that Ayatul Kareem phrases and praises upon Sayyidina Muhammad Ismullah, this is Islam. There's a light that emits from that. See at the very bottom how he put his name on there? Custodian, who say he's custodian? Just because and Allah describes him as in the 8th surah of Qur'an is that they give water and they clap and they thought they became the custodians of the Kaaba. It's not like a title you give to yourself, it's a title given by Allah I'm going to describe those custodians now are based in Turkey. The Islamic nation its base is in Turkey. And now the whole world will rise up against, guess who? Turkey. These are the signs of the wars that are coming with Sayyidina Mahdi These realities of Malakut are realities of light, light and power. When these, these holy letters are assembled the way Allah wants them to be assembled they display an immense light from heavens. When that light is shining that realm of light they see it. As soon as they see these lights it like a vortex pulls them in, they can't escape it. So negative energy when it sees the truth, when Allah says, قُلْ جَعَلْ haq, tell them that when you come into the presence of truth Truth and falsehood they don't match and that falsehood is, is ever perishing. That Ayatul Kareem is the secret of all of these kalima, all of these, these letters, all of these taweezes. That when Allah sends a haqq its job is to destroy falsehood. He's not sending it, what is he sending as a haqq? So when you write the names of truthful servants, Tanzira Rahmah. But not only that, these letters, their names, what Allah has given to them of secrets immediately begins to dispense a light. That light the shayateen can't escape from it, that's why they don't approach it. And when they see it from a distance they see light, they're not looking for your sticker. That's not their realm. So you got to make like those sci-fi movies where they see everything as lights, everything has a different color coming out. They see the color of this light in the vicinity of someone's home because in their realm they don't see from our sight. They see in a different way their lights and energies, they see an energy realm. In that energy realm they see a certain color, when they see these lights they know this is not from here, this is from the heavens. And if they approach that light, what Allah gave from Ayatul Qur'an? That from this haqq 
it will destroy and make the falsehood to perish, it actually will begin to absorb them and pull them into that reality and pull them into that light to destroy it. That's why they run from it and they want nothing to do with these ta'weezes. They want nothing to do with the energy that's emitted from the ta'weez. So when you put it upon your chest they don't need to see the ta'weez, they don't need to take it out to read it to be scared of it, it's the light they see. So then there are spiritual people of different faiths because they practice and they tame their bad character. And you go out and all of a sudden somebody came up to a table and said, there's an immense light emitting from the chest, what, what, what is there? And the person identified and said, oh I have uh, something from my shaykh, so oh, that emits a tremendous light that thing that you're wearing. Why? Why Allah wanted that person to be confirmed so that their faith would grow and understand, these are not material things. These are, these are a ni'mat Allah gives as a rahmah, as a mercy for His creation that, did you think I'm going to leave you to the hands of shaitan? The only shaitan you have to worry about is your nafs that says, I don't need to do it anymore. That's the only shaitan you have to worry about because the other one he's scared to death of it. He doesn't fight the ta'weezes. When you display them on your window of your home that's why we have the sticker. You put it on all the windows of the house, you put it on your car, you put it on yourself, you put the ta'weezes upon the children, everybody they're marked with a Muhammadan kingdom's badge. The shaitans know who they are so they stay away, they'd rather not deal with that person. They'd rather not deal with the energy emitting from that person. So the only thing we have to worry about is my nafs telling me, I don't need it, I don't understand it. And my waswas telling me, it's not important for you to have it. Anyone hearing from themselves, they don't need to do these things is the exact reason you should be doing these things. If you didn't hear it, it wouldn't have a power. Right? When you want to go to movie theatre, in the old days, now pandemic there is no movie theatre. In old days <laughs> when you wanted to do something the shaykhs don't like at all, movie theatres, you never heard waswas telling you not to go. Just go, go, you're gonna have a nice popcorn, you'll get some maybe some candy, go, go. When do you hear waswas? When you say, I'm going to zikr. Oh. You have to go, oh rest a little bit, it's still early, it's still early. Anything possible don't go. Break your tires, break your thing, break something, don't go. Anything possible shaitan can do to stop it. That's we are in the law of opposites. Anything that's tough to you there must be a secret there. Anything that came easy to you forget it. So that's the exact power of the ta'weez. When you're being whispered not to do it, when somebody comes into your house and says, what's this picture here, what's this calligraphy here, what's this writing here? It did exactly the job it was supposed to because their energies cannot take it. Whatever's riding upon insan, he's like a bus or she's a bus filled with occupants, unwanted occupants, mostly homeless occupants. Nefarious occupants, right? They're all on the person, they see this ta'weez that's being burned on them, it's burning literally their being, they're agitated by it, they say, take it down. And that's the power of that reality, that's the power of the light being emitted from these ta'weezes. It's not your brain, it's called faith. That's why when you follow the shaykh, you try to listen to them. If what they tell you entered your head you already lost. If it went to your heart you, you, you said, Samina wa ta'ana this is something I'm going to do. If it entered to your head in what you called logic 
You've already lost the game because shaitan is now training you, tell what he says, bring it to me and let me come and teach you, you don't need it. The teaching comes to your heart, I need ta'weezes, I don't understand it and I don't see what he sees, I'll put my ta'weezes. I mark myself, I mark my property, I mark my homes. You can understand what's in the air and what's flying and what's coming and what's going and what's moving through all the atmosphere. And because of these relics that been given to us, because of all of these realities that been given to us, they disperse and push them away so that they don't stay with on insan. Means then these are the immense realities. That's why when in these associations when they begin to pray, the water, the food and everything around them is a dressing and a blessing of light. If you're ever around them, eat around them, drink around them, play the associations loud so they can be heard so that everything is coming out from the association and entering into the homes. All the beings that accompany them from the heavens enter into the homes. Bless the home, bless the food, bless the drink, bless everything and clear out all unwanted guests because of its lights and because of its realities. These are from the stations of faith as a reminder for myself that what's given to us by the heavens has a heavenly reality and it's meant to combat those creatures that you can't see but they can see that realm, they understand the realm. You'll see it even in sci-fi movies where they, they see it, the devils they see certain things and they don't go into those places because of those lights. We pray that Allah give us more and more understanding of that realm and that people not to listen to their brain and their logic and learn this way of opposites. That's when they talk about how the shaykh would sit and make tafakkur. When he understood something is coming easily, there is no benefit in it. As soon as he made a tafakkur that he's contemplating, why should I do, why should I do it, why should I do it? You got a trick there, shaitan is now playing with you and that's your danger. When he tells you and advises you, do something. Don't think, oh I do so much, why I have to listen to what he's saying about this? No, because there's a different secret in what he's asking you and he wants you to fight your devils, not sit and have logic with them. So anything in this law of opposites that you have to sit and contemplate, I don't want to do it, should I do it, I don't want to do it, is that something there. There's a reality there that shaitan is trying to block you from, from eating from that reality, drinking from that reality, displaying and wearing that reality. That reality is a protection and a blessing to survive what's coming and each day becomes ten times more negative, ten times more difficult. It's not getting easier, it's getting worse. And the reason for propagating, <clears throat> the reason for propagating is for protection. And if they don't propagate that reality, it's the opposite that happens when people start bringing their sick family. And saying, now all, all these people are sick, all my children are sick, all of these things have fallen apart. Shaykh, what do we do now? So, what, what do you do now? Who wants to wait for that to happen? So, did you listen to their guidance? Did you do these practices? Did you display what they've been asked to display? Did you put upon yourself all of these realities? You've decked yourself out with your reality, you learned it, you, 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 you survived by it. Or you're waiting for a catastrophe to test the shaykh if he knows what he's talking about. Ah, oh, I'm not going to do anything, let me see. And then what did Surat al-Kahf say? MashaAllah quwwatana billah. Why? Because the guy came out, they're two people. One pious, the other one thinking, the earth has given him his own strength. I have a good job, I don't know what you're talking about these things are going to go. It doesn't have to be Donald Trump super rich, it could be anyone saying, I have a good job, I don't know what you're talking about things are going to go. We have good health, we're all young, what are you talking about things are going to go? And Allah's warning in Surah Al-Kahf, it can be but just one day. You wake up the next day 
and everything is completely different for your life. And all you have is yourself to blame that, why Allah sent this ni'mat and I don't eat it anymore and I don't drink from it anymore and I don't take from it anymore. I choose to go somewhere else and take from something else, why? You became clever, your faith has increased or it looks like it decreased because you think you're clever now. And then when everything falls apart you come back crying, everything fell apart, everybody's sick, everybody's in a disaster now. So the real shaitan that we have to worry about is ourself and listening to ourself and sitting and having a, a conversation with devils and sitting in the logic of devils which is extremely dangerous. We pray that Allah protect us from that. Click the link now to subscribe.